To get the dubs back to 500 at the quarter mark of the year, Steph, Clay, and Wiggs each scored at least 20. Draymond stuffed the stat sheet with 13, 5, 3, 2, and 1, while Kavan and Jordan were the fifth and sixth Warriors to reach double figures. Since starting 3 and 7, the Warriors have gone 7 and 3, and overall have the second best home record in the association at 9-1. I'll be chanting defense when Golden State plays in Toronto on the 18th of December, so it won't get any easier for the Dubs on the road. But in all seriousness, the Warriors have been awful away from the Chase Center this year, with just a 2-9 record away from home. Curry spoke on that post-game, saying, I wish we could play all our games at Chase Center. However, considering Klay Thompson starting to resemble his vintage self, soon-to-be second-time All-Star Andrew Wiggins is earning his extension, plus JP and Dre have put their beef well in the rear view, the Golden State Warriors may have turned their season around. Before going further in depth, just 9.4% of you watching are subscribed, so subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and make sure you're fully up to date with the channel by following at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Fueling the dubs to even their record at 10 wins and 10 losses against Utah, Steph had 33 points, 4 dimes, 2 steals, and 5 boards. Speaking of boards, it's incredible that at 6 foot 2 inches tall, Steph is second on the team in rebounding. Casuals are going to demand that Looney and Dre should be way ahead of him in that category. And while of course the activity from those big men, among others, is necessary, Curry's will to win, strength, and timing make him an extremely tough rebounder for anyone to deal with, even his teammates. So instead of demanding that the top board getter has to be a big man, let's just appreciate Steph being one of the best rebounding guards in basketball right now. Let's also appreciate elusive behind the back dribbles to split double teams like this one and watch the high arcing floater from Steph and how he looks away directly before letting it fly. After marketing gets switched onto him, with his endlessly repped handle, Steph swiftly goes between the legs behind the back, slight drive entry, and behind the back momentum cross which gets the finisher sliding, then he floats it over top of an elite wing defender in Jarrett Vanderbilt, shifty stuff, and the quickness for a 35 year old is otherworldly. In terms of Steph's off-ball motion, here he sets the weak side down screen for Wiggins, getting Markkinen to assume that that's the main action. And with Lowry worried about Wiggins on the interior, Olenek isn't aware of that, and a fairly weak screen after the DHO from Looney gets Curry the wide open spot up triple. A miscommunication by Utah right there, but that set shows us how well drawn up Steve Kerr's offense is, and also how good Steph's footwork and body language is when moving off the ball. It's decisive and elusive, again manipulating game plans off the ball. Norman Powell and Nick Batum just leave Kaminga alone right here, opting to trap Steph after this empty side pin down. Curry falls down, but his job's already been completed as Kaminga gets the easy jam. But I want to go right back to the game against Utah, where Steph along with Klay Thompson each made six three-pointers. The Splash Brothers are evidently in top-notch condition, both mentally and physically, resembling the prime versions of themselves. While many are claiming this is the last year of the Warriors dynasty, against Utah, the Drip Bros proved anything but that. Klay's been lighting it up like his all-NBA self for a few games now, as the Warriors are 4-0 in Thompson's last four games, and in the month of November, he's averaging 20.7 points per game, shooting over 10 three-point attempts per night, and knocking down an astounding 40.7% of them. For a guy who scratched and clawed day in, day out during his second rehab process in as many years following a major injury, those numbers are incredibly respectable. As Clay approaches being two years fully removed from his last major injury, thankfully the Warriors training staff is extremely cautious with him, as Steve Kerr said that Thompson likely won't play on the second night of back-to-backs for the rest of the season. I don't say it enough, but it's quite literally miraculous that Clay's even able to run up and down a basketball court after what he went through. Of of course, Clay infamously went through a rough patch to begin this season. His numbers in the month of October weren't anything to write home about. Nevertheless, I think Charles Barkley has been overcritical of this man. After Clay said Barkley's comments about him not being the same player he once was hurt his heart, Chuck doubled down on his comments, saying, quote, I was disappointed that he took it personally. I said a few years ago that I thought he was the best two-way guard in the NBA, but because of age and injuries, he's not the same player. I didn't say he was a bum. I'm saying he's not the same player. 
Thompson would politely respond to those comments from Chuck with some barbecue chicken against Houston, going off for a light 41 piece, which included 10 deep range bombs. Those 41 points tied Clay for the 20th highest individual scoring performance out of any player this season. On the topic of lethal warrior wing marksmen finding their flow, A. Wiggins isn't specifically known for his shooting, as Andrew's more known for his slashing and craftiness to create off the bounce for a player who's in a power forward's body. That size allows Wiggins to see over the top of the defense and go to work from there by utilizing the skill set which made him the number one pick back in 2014. However, in terms of his shooting, the Canadian's knocking down 43.8% of his three-point bombs, fifth among all small forwards, and 24th among all NBA players. More impressively, Wiggins is making an insane 48.5% of his spot-up three-pointers, and that says a lot because catch-and-shoot threes make up exactly 85% of his overall three-pointers attempted. All of us know, at least all of us who didn't trade him and a first-round pick for D'Angelo Russell, that Wiggs is an incredibly versatile second option who's capable of dominating in a variety of areas offensively. He can take it downhill like LeBron, just ask Luka. Wiggs can either be the screener or the creator in pick and rolls or DHOs. He can get what he wants off the dribble and nail floating jumpers in the lane with finesse. Point of me saying all that is despite Wiggins having all those abilities, all the Warriors need him to do is pick a corner or a wing and space the floor at will for the Splash Brothers by hitting spot up jumpers. So far, Andrew's done an excellent job of that. In your opinion, have the Warriors turned the corner quite yet? And if not, what needs to happen for you to formally say that? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. And the top five commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Swoo, who says, I'd have to say the most impressive thing about the Celtics is how locked in they are. This team has managed to stay so focused and have so many players playing well, despite taking a loss in the finals, injury to one of your best players, and a huge scandal with the coach. None of those things seem to have had an impact on this team. They just adjust and keep pushing. Great take from Swoo. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.